okay family so it looks like i have a lot of ingredients but not so much um here's my flour and milk mixture my minced garlic cloves um i have some extra carrots in addition to my mixed vegetables my pie crust my plant-based chicken potatoes vegetable bouillon cubes i have celery veggie broth my all seasoning onions parsley salt pepper and butter so here is everything you guys it looks like a lot but it's not really a lot because most of my ingredients are quick ingredients so um my pan has already been preheated and i'm just adding my butter in now so um, i'm gonna say this maybe maybe one or two tablespoons well, it's definitely about two tablespoons but um, I'm just eyeballing it and I'm adding my veggies in, uh, my celery and my onions and my carrots, my hand cut carrots. I'm adding those in now because those take longer to cook than the frozen vegetables. So, and my potatoes. So I'm just mixing up until my vegetables are um, more translucent. So just a couple of minutes or so before I start to add my additional ingredients in. Um, then I'm going to add my minced garlic in. And so I did add about a tablespoon of that into the mixture. And I just um, mix it up just a little bit. As you can see, let it cook for a little while. So now those vegetables are good to go. And then I'm adding my plant-based chicken in there. This chicken is actually lightly um, pre-seasoned already. Um, so you don't have to put a lot of seasoning on there. I started out with just half the pack of the chicken. And then you'll see later on in the video, I did go ahead and add the rest in there because I wanted that to be equivalent to my amount of vegetables that I put in there. So the vegetable bouillon cubes that I have is actually a larger size bouillon cube. So I put the whole thing in there. Um, I put about two teaspoons of salt. Um, pepper and then the Goya all seasoning in there so and some parsley so I just mix that up a little bit and blend all those ingredients in there now mind you I am taste testing this in the background as I go so this is where I decided to add some additional chicken in there so uh, you'll also see me add uh, another round of those seasonings in there as well because I like my food nice and seasoned so I know you guys can relate <laughs> but here I'm putting my vegetable um, broth in there and so this is my one cup measure so I put about two and a half cups of vegetable broth in there so and that has to um that cooled off my simmer a little bit so that has to cook a little bit for it to bring that simmer back up to almost a boil like it was before and so i just let that sit for maybe about two minutes or so and then i decided to add my frozen vegetables those don't take too much time to cook so once i added those started up a little bit then i added my flour and milk mixture I did stir it up before so you can see I had a little bit of the uh, vegetable in my in the cup that got in there off of the spoon but um I only put half of that and that was actually one cup of milk and about five tablespoons tablespoons of flour but I only put half of it in there um I didn't want it to be too um much juice in the middle of the pot pie so put half of it and then I just repeated the same uh, amount of seasonings over again um, with my salt pepper and my parsley and I'm just giving that a good stir let that cook for another couple of minutes and this is my finished product that I'm actually going to pour into my pot pie so um, I took my baking pan 13 by 9 baking pan and I put my pie crust one at the bottom so I wanted to make sure I actually wasn't putting too much in there so that's why I stopped my pour and then I um, decided to start to scoop it in there just to make sure um, but 
that was coming out really nicely make sure I got all those chunks in there guys so good I hope this looks as good to you as it actually was because when I tell you this was definitely delicious so after I put enough in there um, to fill it up right to the top, then that's when I added my second um, pie crust to the top. And I just tore off the excess pie crust from around the edges just so I won't have too much extra. But you know how you have the other pie crust that you use to make your, your regular pies? Um, and you take the fork and go around the edge. So that's what I wanted to do here. You know, synonymous with your standard pot pie. So I just went around the edges after I tore off some of the excess. And then you have to put slits in the top. What's good, family? Welcome back, y'all. Give me some hugs course um thank you so much for joining me for another week um welcome to five vegetarian i am latira aka your favorite cousin and if you are new to this channel please join the family like subscribe to this video share it with your friends i look forward to meeting with y'all every week um so today i have a vegetarian semi-homemade Pot pie. Let me go ahead and show y'all. Of course, it fell apart while I was taking it out the pan, but I was just thinking like, man, what good can I make that I haven't had in a long time? It's been a long time since I had one of those old school um, little bitty pot pies that you can pop in the oven. And I went to the store not too long ago to try to see if I can get me one. But, you know, I go to the store, I read ingredients and all that stuff now because I don't eat a lot of stuff. So I was like, you know what? Let me make my own. So I'm about to taste this and see what it's talking about. Hopefully it'll taste like what I remember the old one to taste like. So we gonna see. It look good though. I'm going to give y'all a bite because I be forgetting. I be forgetting. Y'all see? That is fine. That's fine. Don't y'all hate when y'all food be too hot for y'all to max? Like, <laughs> you gotta keep stopping and blowing. Like, the crust, I think, is what really set it off. I decided it was too much for me to make my own crust. I wanted to do something that was kind of quick, so. Mm. That's really good. In light of everything that's been happening, I just want to encourage everybody to be positive. I hope that, I don't know, you know, your situation or what's going on. I know that there's a lot of people that's been out of work. Um, you know, a lot of people not able to move around. You may not have necessary funds or necessary help to get you through the situation. So I want everybody to be encouraged, stay prayerful, stay hopeful, try to stay as positive as possible. Mm. I'm just gonna take an eat break real quick.
You want another, what'd you say you want another bite? Okay. Let me get you some because I think y'all deserve. See? Every time. I think y'all deserve some more. Mm -hmm. This is fire, y'all. I know I be saying it's fire, but if it wasn't fire, I'd tell y'all. Mm. I hope and pray everybody is able to eat good right now. Um... I'm really just trying to you know maintain just like everybody else mm. so over the last week I found that I really been able to focus more on my writing, if I haven't, if you haven't been here before and you haven't heard that it's my refrigerator, but I've uh, really been able to focus more on my writing and just um, iron out more time to be able to work on that. If you have the opportunity, turn it into something that will benefit you. Like you spend all your time at work you know, doing your nine to five and you've always dreamed of, hey, I want to start my own business. Hey, I want to write a book. Use this time to focus on that if you can. And do something for yourself. Mm. If you're not familiar, I have a, a young adult book entitled baby love and so some of the challenges that i faced when i first decided to write the book was just the fact that i had never written a book before like i don't know where to start um but it's just all about research going online you know figure out figuring out what i need to do and what the expectations are for a young adult book how do I cater to that audience? Developing an outline. How long is too long for my book when I decided that I wanted to do a chapter book? So now that I'm on to my second book, my new challenge is how do I transition from an author of a young adult book to writing my own novel? So that's been my challenge. So I've just been researching and trying to figure out how I can network. Networking with other authors is always awesome. You know, I do that through Instagram, Facebook, um, excuse me, um, different webinars, wherever you can meet new people. I know you can't go out right now, but to be honest, everything is online. So Meeting new people is definitely essential to figuring out how to get started. Um, you can always learn so much by other people's experiences if you haven't had those experiences yet. Um, deciding whether or not you want to have a publisher or you want to be um, publish your book independently. You want to be self-published. So. At first, I was like, okay, well, you know, I would love to get published. And because I thought that's where I was at, you know. But naturally, if somebody's going to publish your book for you, and they're going to help you promote your book, then they're going to be entitled to some of the royalties that you receive from that book. So... I created my query letters and query letters are letters that you write to publishing companies 
to try to get them interested in your work so they can publish you. I probably sent out at least 20 to 30 query letters. Um, I probably received at least 15, 15 no's. Other people just didn't respond. You know, but I made the decision that I still wanted my book to be published regardless. So I researched how do I self-publish my book. Um, and so when you're trying to self-publish, you want to make sure you still put out the same level of quality that you were going to put out before when you had somebody else looking at their book. So I hired an illustrator, which I found on outsource.com. And you can find professionals out here that are on these websites that, you know, are looking for work. Um, outsource.com is one of the websites. Fiverr is another good website where you could find people independently. But I went on the website um, and I, you basically create an ad and say, hey, submit your portfolios of work that you've done. And then you can take a look at the work that they've done and see if it's something that is in line with what you're looking for for your cover. So... Find an illustrator for your book. I found an editor for my book. And I really found somebody who was able to bring my book to life. So once I was able to read some of her previous work. Um, and then, you know, most of them will give you a couple of rough drafts. So you can see the quality of the work before you actually just decide, okay, I want you to go through the project. But she was awesome. So, after you do that, Create Space is a website that you can use to publish your book to Amazon or Kindle. That's what I use. They will tell you what dimensions your books have to be, give you um, information about formatting markets that you're going to be tapping into whether you want your book to be just um hard copy soft copy um read only or audio so many options and same thing with barnes and noble i went on their website Find out what I need to do to get on that website. And it was pretty similar. When you're trying to determine whether or not you want to be your book to be inside of a store, most of the time, you have to have so many books sold online on that. For instance, like Barnes and Noble, you have to have so many books sold online before you can get inside of their stores. Like so. I think it's um, either a thousand books, 500 to a thousand books. But honestly, I feel like more people buy books online than they do in the store. So I wasn't really too concerned. But you should know that you are responsible for promoting your own self. So you have to set up your. Um, you know, speaking engagements, your book signings, um, get out, network with other people, tell people about your book. In all honesty, I am terrible at marketing. I have only just recently become just a little better at social media but I still have a long way to go but everybody can be good at everything so I think as long as you put one foot in front of the other one and take it one day at a time 
and be consistent. Then you can definitely do anything. So that would be my advice that I would give to anybody that's trying to write a book. And there's plenty of stuff that I left out. But that's okay. You have time now to invest in your own research and get the knowledge that works best for you. Or anything you decide that you want to do with this time, the better yourself that I think you should do it because you definitely can do it. So stay blessed. Stay positive, and I will see you next week. Thank you.